Mish here and I've got a GitHub feature for you to check out. If you've been following along our change logs, you've seen all the really cool features we've been shipping lately and there have been a ton of new features. And today we want to talk about Dependabot. Dependabot has in fact just hit a brand new milestone and to talk to us about a whole lot of really cool new features, we have Erin. Erin, over to you. Hello, I'm Erin, the product manager for Dependabot Alerts. And I'm here to talk to you about some cool new features that have helped developers resolve over 21 million vulnerabilities over the past year. Let's get started. If you're looking at a Dependabot Alert for the first time since last year, you'll notice that things look a little different. First, alerts are displayed per vulnerability rather than by package. And they're much more descriptive with titles and metadata that make it easier to quickly assess risk and prioritize across your alerts. Dependabot has been focused lately on reducing the noise. To help you focus on the alerts that matter, Dependabot now proactively filters out false positives with auto dismissal. Curated by GitHub, these alerts are unlikely to be exploitable or have limited effects like slow builds or long running tests, something like a redos attack on a dev dependency. You can also leverage Dependabot's rules engine to set your own custom ignore rules so you can better manage your alerts. But what about the alerts that still make it to your inbox? Well, Dependabot has been reducing the noise there too, and now sorts alerts by default with its new most important calculation. This is essentially GitHub's best guess as to which alerts matter most to you specifically. This calculation considers factors across impact, relevance, and actionability. For example, if you're working with a development scoped alert, it will likely be ranked much lower than one scoped as a runtime dependency. This calculation also takes into consideration a cool new piece of metadata, reachability analysis, which leverages GitHub's precise code navigation engine to determine if your repository calls a known vulnerable function. This feature not only helps you prioritize alerts, but also provides useful context as to how you're affected by it. If you're calling these functions in a way where you're indeed vulnerable, we are currently working on annotating incoming advisories for JavaScript as well as Python. So keep an eye on the GitHub public roadmap for more details on when that's shipping. Finally, there's a whole set of features that I haven't covered today, like alert timelines, the ability to add a justification comment with a dismissal, and all new REST APIs for Dependabot alerts. Thanks for that, Erin. Now you mentioned a couple of these features are in beta and some of them are relatively new. If people are looking at these features and using them and they have feedback, where can they leave that type of feedback? Yeah, you can get feedback from GitHub community discussions. We really appreciate any and all feedback. We read everything that comes in. So please let us know what you think. Thank you so much, Erin, for showing us all the really cool updates to Dependabot. Now, I know you didn't get to go through all of them, so we put the links for some of those features in the description below. So I hope you enjoyed this walkthrough of Dependabot and all the amazing new things that they have. If you really enjoyed it, leave a comment below, like and subscribe so you don't miss the next checkout video, and we'll see you on the next one. Catch you later.